Welcome to another episode of Field Phone Ops. Today's episode, we're going to discuss the FT602 Slant GY Field Phone. So here we go. Okay, this field phone was manufactured during the mid 1970s through the 80s by Telemet GmbH, uh, which is basically GmbH's LLC in German. Interesting. Uh, it's a German company that made uh, military radios, handset uh, accessories, headsets uh, for the German military and for some NATO members, and uh, they had an export market. Um, this phone was actually developed as a direct buy item. There was no contract given to the company saying from a government saying make us military field phones. So they just basically on their own dollar came up with this field phone and uh, put it on the market and sold it. So basically it was a buy off the shelf phone. Um, countries that use them so a bit scarce online. I think the Iranians purchased a bunch. Uh, Poland is mentioned. Uh, I know the UN purchased 40 of these units for use in their Mideast peacekeeping operations in 1986 for about $350 a phone. So that's it. Um, we'll go over the, the system, the, the phone itself. It's basically a ruggedized phone. It's got an aluminum back plane on it. Well, rubber feet so it won't slide around. Uh, it's a plastic cover. It doesn't have any carry case or handles. Um, it does have these cutouts that are located in a few spots, and I'm wondering if those are for locking into some kind of a cradle that could be mounted on a wall or in a vehicle so it wouldn't jump around. Um, it's basically powered by batteries or external batteries. This is the battery compartment right here. It holds three D cell batteries. You can either use regular D cells or uh, rechargeable uh, 1.2 volt ones. <coughs> I actually had one of these field phones I purchased a while back that was in bad shape, and one of the problems with it was <laughs> evidently somebody left the batteries in it for like 20 years, so that was a mess. Basic controls, uh, this is the uh, buzzer volume right here. This little dial knob right there allows you to adjust the uh, buzzer ringer. That's the actual ringer right there. Um, the controls on it, it's got selector right here. You can either run it in uh, common battery switch, CBS, common battery, uh, LBR, which is local battery radio, local battery, or four wire. So if I don't have a manual on this, I'm guessing that four wire has to do with this connector right here on the end of it, which you can see, I'll open it up, which is just a 15-pin uh, male VB connector. I think it has to do with connecting to that and using it as perhaps a modem or to access a radio with some other equipment. Um, Right here is the hook switch, so you can, when you hang it up, it, the handset up, it, it takes it off hook, handset retention spring. It doesn't have a volume control knob, it has what's called this receiver gain button, which you just push and it incrementally brings up the uh, receiver level to a certain point, then it basically starts over again low. So you listen and you use that to increase your volume. This is the selector switch for internal or external battery. Uh, these two binding posts right here where you'd hook your external battery up if you wanted to. Binding posts connect right here. Um, the call button's right here. It's got little LED indicators right here that uh, let you know, uh, you know if you're receiving a ring or you're sending a ring. Um, this is a purely electronic phone. Um, has no real moving parts in it like a hand crank or me mechanical ringer or anything. It was designed to work on, I'm thinking, a H250 connector because that's what's basically on there right now. This is uh, their version of the handset. It's got a push to talk on it. Connector right here. Uh, the handset cord itself is really falling apart, and I'm thinking that the company that supplied this supplied the cord for the Siemens made phone, which I have. That's doing the same thing, the cord's falling apart. But it just locks on here like this, it's got a little indicator on there how to lock it in place. And there you go, that's it. Now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and stop and we'll get a, a TA312 up and we'll make some phone calls. Okay, I have it hooked up with some WD-1 field wire to my the ambiguous TA312. We'll make some phone calls. First call I'll make is from the, the 602 to the 312. I'll push the call button. See the phone rings. I don't know if you can notice the uh, the speed light came on and the transmit light flickered. It's the same rate that the phone is ringing. Let's go ahead and answer it. Test one two. Test one two. Nice and loud and clear. Interesting. Okay, now we'll go ahead and we'll go the other way. 
Uh, I got the volume turned all the way up on the ringer on this. We'll go ahead and send a ring. Notice that the receive light came on. That's interesting. And it stays on, too, so that's a good indicator that uh, you've got a call. If you didn't hear the ring, you see the light on. Go ahead and pick the handset up. Test one, two. Test one, two, three. Another interesting thing, the uh, receive LED light went out when you keyed the handset, so it basically cleared the uh, incoming ring. Um, like I said, this phone should work with all the other two-wire phones that I've done videos on and switchboards. Uh, the four-wire, like I said, I think the four-wire mode has to do with operating this with a remote radio unit or possibly a external fax machine or PC. Since there's no manual, I have no way of knowing. I'm just guessing. Um, and that's pretty much it for the FT602 slash GY. Thank you for watching.